everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita from Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly with My Soulful Home. And we have tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Today is episode 58, Secrets to Buying Antiques. I'm interested. I'm going to be a learner. Well, this is one of my favorite things to do. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to go to Round Top and buy antiques. So, yes. Well, even when I think I know a lot of things about a topic, when I talk with you guys, I do learn things. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, me too. I think I'll be a learner too. Learn things and want to spend money. That's (laughs) that's just (laughs) how it works with me. The urge to to go acquire something. And buy things. Mm Mm-hmm. I wanted to say first on buying antiques that there's a prerequisite to what we're coming, what we're going to be discussing today, and that is I think you really want to know what your decorating style is first and really know the direction you're headed in before you go shopping, not just for antiques, but for anything. And I'm referencing, I'm going to reference episode number two, where we talked about finding your decorating style Mm -hmm. because you don't, especially, I'm going to say, especially with antiques, because most of the stuff is not returnable. So you don't want to be buying something, coming home and then going, oh, this doesn't really work with my style. So I want you to really Mm -hmm. think ahead of time, is this going to work with what I already have in my house? Or I should say the direction I'm going in. Really good tip, Anita, because, um, you can get lulled into the beauty of so many things, but does it really fit into your home? Right. Oh, there's so many things. Mm-hmm. We've said this before. There's so, so many, many styles we love. Things. But sometimes That's they right. just don't go with what what you what your style. So keep that That's in mind. That's exactly right. So I thought so we'd I start love... off. Mm-hmm. Go, ahead. go ahead. I thought we'd start off talking about where to find antiques uh, before mm-hmm. we get into kind of what to look for, because that's kind of part of it. Uh Do you have, I know my tip would be, you know, I talk about buying things at thrift stores all the time, but the secret to that is you've got to go to a thrift store that handles consignment items because the regular thrift stores just really kind of have junk and usually those things have to be repaired or need a lot of work or it's hard to find something really nice at a regular thrift store. So if you're going to a thrift store, look for a thrift store that carries consignment items or If you don't have something like that in your community, I would suggest going to an actual consignment store. I know where I live in Houston, Mm. there are many consignment stores. So that's going to be my first tip would be if you want to shop locally, go to a consignment store. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great tip, but I must say, I've broken that tip rule (laughs) (laughs) on numerous occasions because, you know, sometimes people just cast off things they just want it out of their house and so they'll donate it to the goodwill or other thrift stores that don't necessarily have a consignment well, policy Kelly, out for mm-hmm. i'm gonna tell you i think a lot of that has to do with where you are because i have Absolutely. readers tell me all the time i go to the thrift store all the time and i find nothing Okay. So I think it may be another the reason area. to come live with me in Southern California. Yes, I think, <laughs> I think that might be well, kind of where you I, live. Yeah, the weather and, and great Goodwill <laughs> stores. Well, here's the deal: where I live, uh, you don't want to you you probably will not find a great antique at a um, like a Goodwill Salvation Army. I think it has to do because people in Lancaster County use their things till they're threadbare. <laughs> so you and and this is very frugal. Sound, I yes, I don't know how to put this without sounding snooty. You need to go to a thrift store in the nicest area of town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think local. Well, that's kind of what because, we were saying about yeah. Kelly, where she is. Mm-hmm. People have money, and they're giving away some very nice things. Ex- like in D.C., I go to visit my daughter a lot. You just can't even believe what you'd find on the sidewalk. Well, and in my well, yeah. neighborhood, actually, people do on the heavy junk uh, junk pickup day the night before. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can pick up some pretty nice stuff by the end of the, sure. by the by the road if you don't mind kind of redoing something. Sure, and hey, yeah. that's a great tip. Go to go to the better end of town where there, or go well, to a place yeah. like uh, a, a larger place where it's more mobile and transient, like um, Washington D.C. Yes, and that's why I say you, mean, you like can a find more gorgeous urban, things there. Yes, right? There's yes. just more people, so there's yes. more chance. And here we have, uh, you know, I mean, 
everybody's heard of the little old lady from Pasadena and I won't sing that song for you, but you can have it now buzzing around <laughs> oh, in your head all day. <laughs> but there are a lot of older homes here, which people don't even really think about in uh, California. Um, but our neighborhood is is really old. I mean, you know how old my house yeah, is. Yeah, ours is too. There are a lot of a lot years, of other yeah. older homes, and now, people, you know, someone passes away, uh, God mm-hmm. forbid, and then people just don't want or don't see the mm-hmm. potential in what was left behind, so they give it away. But just to clarify, consignment, if anybody doesn't know, usually a consignment piece is something that the person who's is who's um, consigning it. Um, you know, see some value in it. They want to get some value back. So normally that's a, you know, an item that might be a little bit more expensive, a little bit more special Mm -hmm. and a little more, uh, in a desirable for an antiquer because they have a relationship with the thrift store. That's how the one, the hospital thrift store that I go to a lot Operates. I want to go to that thrift store. I know. Yeah. I want well, to go I, there with some, you, too. Mm-hmm. Remember, I was telling you, the the guild here has a whole room of silver and dishes. Oh, I mean, it's... Goodness. So, I mean, definitely there's some awesome I feel, thrift stores. I feel deprived in that area. You... Now, yes. we, have a, we have tons of auctions and all kinds of antiques, but they're not... I wouldn't call them, like, higher end... Yeah. antiques mm-hmm. now right. and i'm now i'm so into i antique chairs because of you two you've done it <laughs> me. sorry and because you can't I ever think, have too many chairs no and i think a bergere chair would fit so perfectly oh, yes. oh that yeah I, that I, would work beautifully yes in your style. and it's a french chair but you the way you but very you comfy. could update it so well but i'm thinking uh, we're redoing our bedroom and our sitting room right off of it and i'm thinking wow i'm gonna look for two berger chairs to put in there it'd be beautiful oh yeah, yeah. well so, just to finish the consignment bit okay. just oh, just to round sure. it out in case Sorry. anybody doesn't know so then the the um the person who can sign the item once it's sold they would get a portion of the proceeds of the sale and usually mm-hmm. it it uh is on sort of a time frame a sliding scale you know, if it's been in there for a month it's this price if it's been there six weeks they reduce right. it a little bit so that's mm-hmm. something you can watch too and w- that's what I do at my the hospital thrift store which takes donations and consignment items so right. just hmm. if you're starting to troll these places like I do <laughs> get familiar with how they operate you know they have certain tags that are donation boom that's the price that will be the price until it leaves if it's a consigned item hmm. they have the date on the tag that it first came in and then they'll have it's usually a month to 6 weeks later where they're going to reduce it now yes. you know if it's yes. too pricey or you're not sure and you think well at x price i would buy it but on y price i'm not too interested then you just kind of i am um, sometimes if it's a really uh, item that I really, really have my eye on. I might even put it in my calendar to make sure I go back mm-hmm. through. And yes. if it's and still ours, there, then you're going to get it at the reduced price. And that's our and consignment that's a places because if you like it, um, you're gambling that maybe oh yeah somebody yeah, else will won't like it gone. until the price goes down because it right. may be gone. Mm-hmm. We'll see. And in our consignment store, everything has that same uh, markdown. I think it's every month it goes down, mm-hmm. and then after a certain point, it gets really the price gets chopped. Okay, so another place I want to mention is eBay. And this is really critical. I would actually, if you know what you want to go look for, sometimes we just go out looking, shopping for antiques and we see something. We don't even know. We we didn't even know we needed that silver-plated teapot. But, you know, but when you see it, you go, oh, I have to have this. Mm -hmm. That's right. So sometimes you're going, you know you're looking for something in particular. I recommend starting at eBay for two reasons. One is that's really where I go to get pricing information. In fact, I've been known to, at the thrift store or at the consignment store, be looking something up to see what would this go for on eBay, and that kind of gives me a feel for, am I overpaying for this item? The other reason Mm. I like to look on eBay is because it will give me so many more options for whatever it is that I'm looking for. For example, like if you wanted a silver-plated water pitcher for flowers, there's very simple ones and very ornate ones. And so if you're looking at one in the store, you might say, well, this is pretty, but is there something I really like better that I could get on eBay? Because, you know, look for whatever. There's going to be the biggest selection of most items is on eBay. So I need it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's such a good idea. I don't often think of eBay. Right. So that's where you're, so eBay is going to tell you what 
uh, op styles and colors and whatever that the item is available in and pricing information. So go ahead, Kelly. Wow. Well, so th- uh, do you use eBay as your source over Etsy because you're getting more detailed information or you just think it is a broader marketplace? I think it's cheaper. You think it's cheaper? I think it's almost okay. always I cheaper. I just like wow. the setup of Etsy and ha- being a former Etsy yeah, shop well, owner yeah. you know I mm-hmm. tend to like I would love to help mm-hmm. you know other shop owners mm-hmm. there I don't know I mean I'm sure there are nice shop owners on eBay too I just tend to Etsy all the time if I'm doing that but I'm wondering you know maybe mm-hmm. that's not the best place to be going well for I the you know Etsy I think Etsy kind of has a more of a boutique feeling to it and a lot of As the, it does yeah and right. some of these uh people are on both platforms and a lot of eBay sellers are small businesses so you would still be supporting a small business but I for okay. eBay because A, I think the prices tend to be better because it's not as frou-frou and right. uh, B, I think there's more selection. But I've noticed okay. that just something, it'll be something really I know I can get something at 10 bucks on eBay or at the thrift store and I'll go on Etsy and it's 50 bucks and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. So okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Not to say, so in okay. other words, be careful and compare where well, you Well, I'm shop. just saying compare. Now, listen, there's some yeah. gorgeous things on Etsy. I'm not saying don't buy there, but I'm just saying just be conscious. You know, you can be, just look at the pricing. And okay. if you have an Etsy shop, it's Anita at Cedar Hill Farm. <laughs> <laughs> we love Etsy. I love okay. Etsy. No, I didn't. No, I do. I And I do no, buy I things know. on Etsy. <laughs> But, you know, anyway, just check both places. How about that? Mm-hmm. That's oh, good, boy. Good, good, good point. I can, good feel, point. I can feel the emails coming right now. <laughs> no, but I, I, lo- I love your poise. In the heat of the moment, you're like zeroing in on this item at the thrift store. And you're like, wait, let me just check the inventory on well, eBay. But it's that my, is so smart. It's in my hot little hands while I'm checking, though. I'm right, right. Oh, right. Good. I'm not yes, leaving it out yes. there, you know. No, so, well, okay. that's, you know, that's a very practical tip. You know, it just don't leave it there and troll the rest of the store and come back around. Like, if you love it, grab it, hold on to it's it. Like, it's like, like home goods. If yeah. you yes, don't, if you yes. don't put it in your cart, it's going to be gone. Yes. So, yes. uh, okay. So eBay, thrift stores, consignment stores, uh, you can go to antique malls, flea markets, garage sales, uh, you know, round top. And then where's the place that you go? The, uh, Rose Bowl. Pasadena Rose Bowl. Oh, right. Yeah. Where's the place you go? Okay. The world famous Rose Bowl flea market. There you go. There you go. Okay. And then auctions. I go to gallery auctions in Houston has some, uh, is a great place uh, for good prices and and lots Mm -hmm. of antique items. So check There is nothing, although there's nothing like a Lancaster County auction with the Amish and all the other people. It is, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it, but it's so much fun. And it's from oh. a bygone era. Uh-huh. Right. And, you know, their people are selling hot dogs and coffee. And so, you you know, people, it's you can so smell much the manure on the Amish an people's antique. boots. Right. And yeah, it is a total, total um, fill up the senses type of an experience. Right. And, and a you, throwback. Right. And you can walk away with, I wouldn't, you know, I've never come up with really anything like a fine antique, although some beautiful handmade armoires and cupboards uh, that were made like, you know, maybe 50, 60, 100 years ago. And they're beautiful, but mm. I wouldn't call them, I mean, they're homemade and with beautiful um, woods, local woods, chestnuts, ashes, things like that. Um but they are fun. Mm, so okay. if you've not gone to an antique, um, 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 gone to those kind of um, places to search out um, beautiful antiques and fun antiques, make sure you do. Well, and I would say if you've never been to an auction, just go. There's so much oh. fun. And I've got to say, there's always, now that for some reason, the auctions I could do, there's always dogs sitting in chairs wearing, you know, outfits and that would fit right <laughs> in. I mean, there's always somebody kind of oh quirky there and fun. The people watching is really wonderful. So it is. It's the, that's the fun part of it. And people yeah. might be intimidated by an auction. I've only been to a couple, but I, you know, and again, they were sort of what y- Yvonne is describing. They were way out on the east end of Long Island and, and much more casual And because mm-hmm. I think yeah, people get the sense of an it's auction. It's not like Sotheby's. Right. That <laughs> it's not like, sure. oh, they're going to be, you know, rolling out this, uh, you know, Toulouse-Lautrec and you're like, mm-hmm. gee whiz, that's out of my price range. <laughs> well, and, um, yeah. 
There but is it's an, not like that at all. Well, there's one auction house I had, used to go to in Houston, and they moved to a new location. And when I saw there was valet parking, I knew I was in trouble. Was <laughs> the oh, prices yeah. were not going to be real that good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So anyway, yeah. I have a, a, a blog post all about uh, antique, uh, you know, tips tips for uh, buying at an antique auction. I'll put it in the show notes so you'll mm-hmm. you'll get all those good, good. tips on what to do, good. what not to do, and you know how to shop there. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Can I just say this? Mm-hmm. My style is pretty traditional, classic. Um, you know, I buy things off of websites like, you know, Pottery Barn, go to Home Goods, that type of thing. But, you know, if you add, if you have that style and you're thinking, oh, I don't know about antiques, this is, this show isn't for me. It really is because if you add that, you know, maybe pair of antique candlesticks or you were saying like a uh, silver plated um, uh, pitcher or um, some dishes that are really, you know, ironstone or, or just something small, like a small chair. What that adds so much charm to mm-hmm. a traditional classic look. Oh, it definitely does. Mm-hmm. And it's so worth looking at antiques for that reason. Okay, so let's talk about what to look for when you're looking at antiques. So do you have any uh, thoughts on that, Kelly? What are you looking for? I mean, what, what, sh- what do buyers need to be looking for or aware of oh okay so what you want to look for any um imperfections and it may mean something to you or not but it's Mm -hmm. good to know like if you're looking say at a a plate or tureen if you see any hairline cracks or chips or anything like that to my mind you know sometimes that makes the item uh 
more precious to me. I like it better when mm-hmm. it's got I a little bit too. of life to it um, rather than being pristine. But it really depends on your look. But you can also use it. And I'm not saying to sort of like gouge anyone who's selling them. But you can definitely use that sort of information when you're negotiating the price. And as we've talked in another episode, uh, I think that um, asking, you know, what is the best price? Can you do any better? Is something that's almost expected Mm -hmm. when you're Mm -hmm. shopping in this way. So I would definitely take a look. And if you're really looking for an item that you want to be perfect, you you know, you don't want to get it home and be like, oh my gosh, look, this handle was glued back on. Mm -hmm. So I would check Mm -hmm. the piece over really well. I would check the bottom of the piece to see if there are any markings because generally if a piece is marked it has a little bit more value and sometimes a significantly more value and again you've got your smartphone with you you can check it while you're there and sure. take a picture of the right. mark look for something right. and not somewhere. only mark something that is numbered yes mm-hmm. yes can really be worth a lot more yes yes and if you, if there is something if you if you're going which is sort of an open mind and what moves you or you know, what's what just you know takes your breath away when you're shopping. That's one thing. But if you're going for a specific item or you collect something and you're going to add to your collection, then definitely do your homework. Uh, I would go on and uh, the internet and I would find out everything I could about what I'm looking for and do some comparison shopping online before you go. So then you have a good idea of not only – you know, what is the next piece you'd like to add, but how much you'd be willing to spend for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, like some dishes, uh, when I buy some really old French dishes that are kind of very old, I will buy them even if they've got chips on them. But if it's something that's, you know, if it's something just very unique, very hard to find, I have some purple lavender transfer wear, very hard to find, so I went and got some with some chips here and there. But, you know, if it's... So just be aware of if it's chipped. I'm not saying don't buy it, but just kind of make sure the price is appropriate Mm -hmm. for that. And then if it's something that's easy to find, then no, I'm not going to buy the chipped thing. I'm going to buy the more pristine version of it. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to say the older it is, the harder it is to find a, a particular item in a pristine condition. Here's another thing. When you're thinking about buying furniture, Mm -hmm. Um, I think that you should look for something that um, is fixable, first of all. I mean, that's really important. Yeah, if it's got like a wobbly leg or something, make sure that that's, you can fix that with, you know, glue or with a screw Mm -hmm. or, um, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to buy something that it has uh, a big split in it, like on the leg or something. Mm -hmm. Those aren't going to hold up. Also, I think you need to look for um, just the beautiful lines, you know, that that is something that's so attractive that uh, and workmanship that you don't see today. I think that's really important as well. I think you kind of have to have a feel for what you can repair yourself or if Mm, you have someone in place to do the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I don't, if it's wobbly, I walk away. I don't want to deal with it. Um, I know Kelly, it doesn't mind doing that. So, I mean, just kind of, but if you feel like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I don't want, that makes me nervous. Then, then just don't, don't grab that Mm -hmm. piece because Mm -hmm. the worst thing you want to do is buy something and then realize you can't repair it. And then it just sits in your garage taking up space. Yeah, so I, I do. I do have some things in my garage taking up space. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, she says in a whisper. That's okay. A whisper. Yeah. Take um, a number, little chair. I'll get to you at some point. But yeah, I to- I totally agree. I mean, some things you know. But if it's five bucks and you love it, and you say, "Oh well, I'll try," you know, I'll try my wood glue and I'll I'll try my little vice and see if I can mm-hmm. get it in there. But but I agree. There's no sense buying you know, buying trouble in a sense, you know, just something Mm -hmm. where you're going to be disappointed and it's not going to work out. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that the, the price figures into all of that. And maybe you end up using that little chair just to put a plant on it and, you know, put a, a few things around it and make it more Mm -hmm. of a, of a, um, just a decorative vignette or something Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I think when I'm thinking about getting something, um, that maybe needs to be repaired, I just, Make sure, make sure you have a person that will repair it and do a good job. Mm -hmm. And also I look at, do I have somebody who can, now I have a slip coverer and a reupholsterer 
So you need you to have think, to have oh, do I have somebody who can do those things mm-hmm. if yeah. you don't want to do them yourself. And you can paint and you could paint it. So Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing is you just need some great sources for fabric as well. Mm, when you're yes. thinking about, okay, I have this beautiful Berger chair, but where am I going to find the fabric that's going to complement it? That's a good when point. I, when I send it away to have it slip covered or to have send it away to have it reupholstered. So now having said all that, when I am shopping, I'm going to tell you what I look for. Okay. When Ooh, I am. Okay, at- everybody listen in. Yeah. <laughs> Lean in. We got to get the your, good get stuff. Get your pen and pencils and your paper it's ready. It's like we're following you around. I'm at oh, Marburger. I'm behind you. I don't oh, know you, but I'm both watching of you. you. Mm-hmm. Stop making fun of me. Okay. So really, I kind of, in a way, throw all that out the window. I shouldn't say throw it out the window, but I mean, I really just look. All that stuff I just told you is. I just forget it. No, no, no. Okay. No, 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 no. That's not true. No, I do actually keep all that in mind. But what I'm saying is I'm looking for something that speaks to me. And I do keep all that in mind. I do Anita, keep the price Anita, in mind. Anita, Anita, buy me, buy like, me, come, buy me. Oh, <laughs> take me home. Take me home. Take me, take me, home. Home. <laughs> Put me at the farm. No, no, I want to be in Cedar Heights. No, no. <laughs> okay. How about that new mountain house? Okay. I love all the mountains. Right. Oh, boy. Stop it. Somebody put a plug in that one. <laughs> in that chair. <laughs> No. So, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I definitely do keep in mind the price and I keep in mind, is it mm-hmm. wobbly or something? But I'm just saying at the end of the day, I really look to see, is this something that just is, it just kind of makes me so excited to look at it. And so I'm just saying mm-hmm. I might relax something. If I just found like the love of my life and it was a little bit wobbly, maybe I would make an exception in that particular case. I haven't that yet. That would be Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wobbly. <laughs> oh. So I'm just saying, um. Yeah, I mean, just but the love of your life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are you looking for, uh, Yvonne? Well, I'm just like you. I'm looking for something that I, I just that make that wows me, that makes me swoon. I like that word, sort of like weaken. Literally, mm-hmm. I you do go so sort mm-hmm. of a breathless and weaken the knees when you see something. That's what I look for. Um, I actually look for things that I don't need a lot of repair. I don't. Bob's pretty good. My Bobby's really good at, um, you know using a vice wood glue putting screws in it he's really good with things like that but beyond that I don't want to deal with it like if it's a king seat and it's broken I just I pass that up because I don't well no, I don't interesting want to you that, that you say that because mm-hmm. I actually um I have bought chairs that had a kind of a problem with the cane seat and mm-hmm. I actually cut um I used to use my saber saw or mm-hmm. jigsaw and just cut an, a little cover. <laughs> I lo- you're I love you're my hero. <laughs> you're the a, chair's hero. Uh, I'm just sure you like Anita pulling out the saber from uh, <laughs> her belt. So you just cut a little seat for the for it, and then make a little cushion to put on top with a skirt around it. You, yeah. Or but just, for me, that's mm-hmm. not what I, I mean. The, yeah. I would pass that one up. Right, but see, um, that's because you know for, that's something you're not going to deal yeah, with. Yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah, and, that's um, fine. And anything, you know, I don't mind replacing, I don't mind painting it. Actually, that's a plus. Or if I could strip it and I like, I don't mind um, the hardware because you can always change that out. Mm -hmm, That's true. And so I, and I really look for things that I could upholster with some beautiful uh, fabric Mm -hmm. because you you can Mm -hmm. personalize it then. Right. So let's talk about the stuff that you don't, doesn't bother you, that might be a defect with something you're buying hmm. that you don't like. I mean, what, what? Tarnish. Tarnish. Oh, that's a good yeah. point because that'll mm-hmm. polish off. And sometimes mm-hmm. I buy things that are miss- missing some, some uh, plating in places. I still mm-hmm. buy it if I really mm-hmm. like the shape of the item. Oh, yeah. I don't mind the tarnish. I like the tarnish. Mm-hmm. I do. I pay more for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've got I think a stack of things for you, for girl. <laughs> Oh yeah, I crazing, which is the all the crackly lines. Mm-hmm. Especially, you'll see that mm-hmm. on. Some, it doesn't bother me either. I think the white dishes cool. are yeah. ironstone. It's actually happening, and maybe we'll talk about this someday in my farmhouse sink. Which oh I did, really? Yes, oh. and then I didn't know that was going to happen. But that's an, that's not a it's not an antique, but it's mm-hmm. you know made like an antique. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just going with that. And, I, yeah, and right, I'm finding yeah. by doing some research, it's I'm not the only one. But that's okay because really? I don't. Really, I didn't have that happen. Okay. In mine. 
Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt go ahead clean out your closet then head straight to quince i love every item quince offers from wardrobe to decor and i can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at 49.90 the price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering it keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom everything feels right with quince the price the quality and the sustainability quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach and like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Yeah. But, think, uh, yeah, the crazing doesn't bother me. And then I don't worry about if I don't like the fabric on a chair because right. nine times out of ten I'm going to recover it anyway. That's exactly right. And then right. if it's an item, a piece of furniture, and I don't like the paint color or I don't like the stain color, if the shape of the item, if I love the item otherwise, you know, I'll slap a coat of paint on there and it's fixed. It's all about the shape. Mm-hmm. About yes. the shape. About yeah. the shape. It's the, not it's the, fit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Anita got that one. Oh, that's funny. Oh, so cute. <laughs> yeah, the bones. If you got good bones, yeah. you're coming home with me probably. That's right. that's right. And even if I don't know where I'm going to put it, I don't mind getting something that's that fabulous and finding a home for it, mm-hmm. recycling other things out, especially if I get it for a song. Yeah, because um, I used to mm-hmm. say for myself, nine times out of ten, I've got a trunk load and maybe I've spent $50, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes oh, wow. I spend mm-hmm. five and I'm just so happy I have this this new little treasure to come home and clean mm-hmm. up and find a spot for. And so that's just super fun. It's just a really mm-hmm. fun way to shop. And yeah. I, I mm-hmm. have to admit, I, I have friends who buy very, very high-end antiques. That's not my style. Mm-hmm. So that's not what I'm interested in. So I, you know, I don't have the eye to look for, you know, what to look for in something that's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars because it's uh, 300 years old from France. Right. I, I don't have that eye, but I have the eye of saying, oh, the lines in that are so awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I I'm mean, sure most, most yeah. of our listeners probably would fall, you know, more to my end than mm-hmm. probably most of the listeners than somebody who's going out purchasing really, really high end, the real deal that you don't want to touch. Well, and I, I'm not a person who really does it for investment either. I mean, if I don't Mm -hmm. like it, I'm not interested in, I see some things sometimes and think that's a great deal for that particular item, but 
I'm not interested in buying it for investment purposes. So if I don't want it in my home, I'm not mm-hmm. buying it. And yeah. I'm not, and well, also. not even investment. Yeah. A lot of my friends buy yeah. it because that's what they want to decorate their home with, you know. It's an right. investment piece. Oh, but it's, okay. But mm-hmm. it's, I wouldn't call that an investment. Well, I guess we're talking about the pedigree. I don't care mm-hmm. about the pedigree. Mm-hmm. No, I don't care uh, either. So, you know, some Sometimes people, I do. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, you know, okay. sometimes sometimes maybe you do. I really don't ever. Um, if I love it and it, and it's in a good price and it has the good lines and all the things that we're talking about, mm-hmm. that's enough for me. But some people, you know, they really want to know the pedigree. So you want to know the background where, mm-hmm. you know, who made it? Was this this famous woodworker? Was this a famous uh, ceramicist? And and that's just a different way to antique. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a collector. T- that's a, that more of a, a collector, collector right? Correct. And you may not even that's want correct. to use it. You know, that may end up behind glass in somebody's mm-hmm. house. Right. Like, I want to be using my stuff all the time. Yeah, I don't collect that kind of stuff. If, the, if it's the kind of stuff that has to be put behind glass, I don't. That's not the stuff mm-hmm. I go for. Mm-hmm. I want stuff that I can use. So I absolutely. Actually, I want things that I can reupholster, paint, stain, mm-hmm. um, and put my own mark on it. Without it being yeah. costly, and but That's I will really what I'm looking for. But I something just, that'll look just really transform an area in my home um, with a unique style. So I'm just going to throw this one out there because I've noticed this too in doing a lot of shopping. I'll see people that are really mm-hmm. picky. Oh, this has this mark. This is scratched here. This has a dent here. And I'm just going to say this. Um, you know, if you really uh, want it in pristine condition, I mean, maybe antiques aren't for you. I mean, you really mm. need to be comfortable with some dings and knocks and some patina, some tarnish, some this some that. So, I mean, that's kind of what we, those of us that love antiques love all that feeling of yes. age. Well, so, it's pers- and it's not it's for the everyone. It's the personality of the piece. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that, if you're it's not comfortable with that, then, you know, you probably should buy new. Yeah. Good well, point. A, a, a couple little things here and there make a big difference. It really warms up a house. I think so too. I do. Mm-hmm. I love antiques. So mm-hmm. we're all comfortable with patina. <laughs> and scratches and bumps. And, yeah. and in, ding. in our homes, in ourselves, in everything mm-hmm. we do. And that's, that's, you know, just kind of the way we roll. So I hope you learned some things today. I know I did. And we want you to remember that we are here to help you uh, create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey there. If you're loving our podcast like we're loving our podcast, we would love you to rate and review us. Head to iTunes to do that. It's easy and it would mean so much to us.